We're at Baba Blacktail Farm today with everyone's favorite shepherdess, Tess, where lambing season is in full swing and we're going to talk about the successes of lambing and then some of the complications that can come from... We're going to talk about yeah. bottle babies. There we go. <laughs> March, we've had uh, 40 babies born, and we're about halfway through. <laughs> That's out of uh, 13 mothers. 13 mothers have given me 40 babies so far, so we have a lot of multiples. And that has its own excitement, because you have a lot more tangled legs and you have the possibility of bottle babies. And uh, in the past, what happened is I always had one or two bottle babies, and that causes sleepless nights to get up and feed them at regular intervals. So this year I thought I was so clever that I would buy a seasoned um, dairy sheep. She's an East region, as, as are some of my other flock. But she had the, the fame for uh, being able to nurse or being willing to nurse anybody who was a bottle baby. She said, oh yeah, come on, I've got extra for you. And so I thought, oh, this will be great. I'll, if I have a bottle baby or two, I'll just put them with Big Sister. A big sister will take care of them all night long and I'll sleep very comfortably. Well, uh, little did I understand what was going to happen this year. It's a very different sort of year. So big sister got quads. She had four babies. This is one of the babies. And the, the combined weight of those four babies is over 40 pounds. And then you have the, the, all the birth fluids. So she was carrying a very heavy load and she wound up um, getting a sag in, in her back and I think that she got a pinched nerve. We'll have to get a chiropractor to evaluate that. But I think that she just, uh, the load was just too much and so she went down two days before uh, she lambed. And I had a lot of question in my mind how she would be able to give birth, but she did. I, did a little helping, but she managed. But her hind end is still not strong, though she has become very strong. Um, so I had to rig up an interesting thing to, to help her, um, to keep her healthy and to get her strong again. So in the meantime, I have bottle babies of the bottle baby saver. <laughs> so what irony. enough but the back end is she's just still not quite steady enough to get up or not powerful enough to get up so we tried various things one friend who's an engineer and she came and did this <laughs> and put this up and then another friend came and brought me this kind of stuff that I could make sort of a climbing harness and so the gist of it is that every so often I need to um, lift her up and move her legs and move her to a clean place and make sure that her udder and her hygiene is good. So we just, you know, we just take the chain hoist and put it to here and then lift her up so that I can um, <laughs> clean her udder, I can clean her, take care of her hygiene, and I can move her from place to place. See, look at, here she is, she's starting to climb up again. And she, every day she's a stronger, she's, she's with it, you know, I'm just hoping that whatever pinched nerve or whatever is going to get get remedied. Today she's pushing her front end up and sitting up, and that's progress. Okay, here we go. Whoa, look at you. 
I, I had to give them all little co different colors so that I could tell them apart so I could find out who's, who's eaten and what their needs are because a couple of them are voracious boys, a couple of them are more fragile, and then she's very determined. So they, they have to get each what they need. And rather than giving them all of their ounces at once, I kind of give them about a third of it and then move to the next one. That way their tummies get accustomed to something in there. Oh yeah. So it's always important to make sure that the fluid is covering the whole exit. Those four are from Big Sister. And this one is from Calico. And Calico had triplets, but she could only count two. So this particular baby wasn't doing well with Calico and uh, became a bottle baby. So she became a bottle baby, baby in with the others. Babies! Woo, look at those babies! Look at them! She takes care of their hygiene. I take care of their front end with food. And uh, hopefully she will get up and back on her feet and be able to, you know, take them all around. <laughs> found with bottle babies is this they they would love to keep chugging if they if they're enjoying it they want more they want more they want more and then what happens is that you inadvertently feed them too much and their stomach becomes really um, stagnant and is not able to accommodate that much food and they get what's called rubber rubber curd and rubber curd inside means that they're it's like a piece of rubber and that it's not digesting and so then they get the scours and it's altogether a bad situation. So how to prevent that? First of all, you have to discipline yourself to figure out, just give them only what they need and as many times as possible during the day. So in this book, you know, you have a, a schedule and that schedule is really, really helpful. And then what, what I did was to figure out my particular schedule for this because it, you have to translate it from, you know, day one, th day one, two, and three, you do such and such. Well, what I did was I figured out, okay, sis sisters four, they were born on March 7. So day one is March 7, 8, 9. So in those, those days, I have to feed every three hours. And then the next days, I have to feed every four hours. And so it makes more sense to you rather than looking at the book and saying, well, let's see, that's how many days ago. So just make yourself a chart. <laughs> and then that tells you when, how often. And that's based on their date of birth and this schedule. So that is the when to do it. Um, how much to do it. <laughs> that's another key thing. I weigh them, make sure how many pounds of animal I'm feeding and figure out how many ounces I need per day and then divide that into four or six or you know two or whatever. And that is all here to make it useful for yourself. Figure out a chart kind of like that where you say on this on this day I have to feed these days, these times. So what we did was we figured out the how frequent, how frequently, and we figured out how much based on their weight and the formulas in here. And then we have to think about what we're giving them. And they, they generally don't do well with cow's milk because sheep's milk is a lot richer uh, in, in fats and so forth. But I am so fortunate. Thank you, Lily the cow, who's a dairy cow in my vicinity and, uh, and Arlene and Roger have prepared dairy, uh, their dairy cow's milk with an added amount of fats in, and uh, protein and lactase and so forth, so that it makes 
a cow of sheep, the closest approximation of sheep's milk. And so that's a really big boon. So I just shake that up, make sure that it's not cold, cold. And I've been using that. But if I didn't have that, and in previous years before Lily, the cow was around, then we use milk re replacer. And there are various ones on the market. I, I find that mine prefer this taste. Inside of here, there is a scooper. And on the back is the, the label, the information about it. Their recipe is one of these scoopers for a pint. So I use a cup, which is half a pint, and so I use a half a scooper.